as audience members often feel like we've seen it all, and for the most part we'd be right, but every so often a film will do something so totally unexpected that all we can do is sit there in sheer stunned amazement. And so with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture, here with 10 recent movie moments nobody saw coming. Number 10. Megan Sings Titanium in Megan the marketing for Megan did an absolutely outstanding job of selling the film's darkly comedic and surreal nature, focused on the titular android kicking ass and looking damn slick while doing so. But the trailers had enough restraint not to spoil one of the film's best moments, a scene that is both terrifying and hilarious, and quickly blew up on social media following the film's release. At the end of the second act, once Megan has caused the death of young Katie's bully Brandon, Katie gets ready for bed and asks Megan about what happened. Megan cryptically retorts that she'll never let Katie come to harm ever again, before launching into a tender, if fundamentally robotic, lullaby rendition of David Guetta and Sia's 2011 pop hit, Titanium. It's an especially inspired choice given that Megan is herself comprised of titanium, but beyond that achieves a mix of being outrageously funny and utterly horrifying. Number 9. The Closing Montage of Cinema in Babylon Damien Chazelle's Babylon is unquestionably one of the most ambitious and unhinged movies of the past year. A debauched three-hour fever which appears to reach peak insanity when protagonist Manny is brought to an underground place of revelry called the Arsehole of Los Angeles. But the most bizarre and unexpected moment comes right at the very end of this film, when Manny returns to Los Angeles after roughly 20 years away and heads to a local cinema to watch a screening of the newly released Singing in the Rain. Manny is moved to tears by the musical's iconic titular sequence while remembering his own past in Hollywood. And then the scene transitions into a montage, celebrating the most technologically groundbreaking films in cinema history, spanning all the way from A Trip to the Moon to The Jazz Singer, The Wizard of Oz, The Matrix, Tron, Terminator 2, and perhaps most jarringly of all, Avatar. The montage ends with a blink and you'll miss it meta flourish, a glimpse of a slate from Chazelle's own film, before cutting back to a tearful Manny for a few seconds and then finally rolling credits. Some found that this montage was a glorious triumphant celebration of cinema, while others felt that a world-class filmmaker ending his film on a glorified YouTube supercut was a tacky and uninspired choice. Either way though, nobody saw it coming. Nobody expected to see the Na'vi in Chazelle's period Hollywood epic. Number 8. Scrooge's Death by Chimney in Violent Night Though it didn't surprise anyone that holiday-themed action flick Violent Night boasted its fair share of grisly gore – I mean, the clue is in the title – nobody could have anticipated quite how brutally the film's antagonist would meet his maker. Violent Night's big bad is Mr. Scrooge, the leader of a gang of mercenaries who plot to steal $300 million from the Lightstone family's vault. Of course, they didn't count on the actual Santa Claus showing up to stop them, and after he and the family members dismantle most of the mercs, it comes down to Santa taking on Scrooge. Scrooge manages to get the drop on Santa, and just when old Saint Nick's goose appears to be cooked, Santa uses his magical powers to force himself up the nearby chimney. And because Santa grabs hold of Scrooge, he drags him up the chimney too, explosively obliterating his body as it's forcibly crushed into the chimney's confines. When Santa emerges out the other side, he's left holding Scrooge's gory, dismembered torso, which he promptly hurls down to the ground with a satisfying squelch. Even for the violent standards of the film up until this point, this was quite the gnarly kill to send audiences home with. Number 7. Lydia Conducts a Monster Hunter Concert in Tar Todd Haynes' Oscar-nominated drama Tar was one of 2022's most unforgettable films, centred around a celebrated conductor, Lydia Tarr, who is accused of sexual abuse. At the end of the film, Lydia's reputation is left in tatters as she's removed as chief conductor of the Berlin Philharmonic and consequently moves to the Philippines in order to keep working. The closing moments show Lydia preparing to play with her new orchestra, the message seemingly being that cancel culture doesn't exist and Lydia will continue to make a solid living regardless of her acts, until the final seconds reveal precisely what she's conducting. As Lydia begins conducting, Haynes cuts to an audience full of Monster Hunter cosplayers 
years, revealing that she's conducting the score for one of the iconic video games. Now, the ending is in no way a slight against Monster Hunter fans, but rather that for Lydia, conducting a video game score to an audience full of people dressed as its characters is a colossal fall from grace from her prior glory. Some eagle-eyed viewers may have spotted that Monster Hunters was credited in the film's lengthy opening title sequence, but it would have been safe to assume that the video game would just appear on a TV screen at some point in the film, rather than actually being a major plot point to the film's ending. But at the same time, it made for a hilarious and totally unexpected conclusion to the story. Number 6. Human S'mores in the Menu the Menu boasts one of the strongest and most brilliantly enigmatic first acts of any movie released last year. Until it becomes clear that celebrity chef Julian Stowick has a major bone to pick with pretty much everybody assembled in his restaurant that evening. Julian's entire ploy has been to end the night with everyone in the restaurant, including his guests, his staff and himself, dying, serving as an ultimate statement of his psychotic disillusionment with the fancies of fine dining. And so, Julian's final dish is a dessert like no other. The most effed up version of s'mores ever made. Julian, clearly no fan of the childhood classic, has his staff cover the floor in crushed crackers and adorn the diners with cloaks made of marshmallows and chocolate hats. Julian then sets himself and the restaurant on fire, with the diners helplessly watching as their chocolate hats melt, and eventually, an explosive barrel blows the entire restaurant to smithereens. The only one who manages to escape, of course, is Margot, who, in addition to being an unexpected guest at the restaurant that night, had the presence of mind to ask for a cheeseburger to go. Given that many expected the menu to take the cannibalism route, this was a rather surprising and hilariously messed up narrative turn indeed. Number 5. Shyamalan sells an air fryer in Knock at the Cabin M. Night Shyamalan has appeared in the vast majority of his movies, often in surprisingly large roles. Yet in his latest film, Knock at the Cabin, he opted to appear in a fleeting cameo so as not to distract from the confined apocalyptic scenario. If you're wondering how he managed to insert himself into a film that is singularly focused on seven people facing off inside a cabin, he appears, for a few seconds, on a TV inside the cabin. Midway through the movie, as the intruders are cycling through the TV channels, an infomercial shows a host, played by Shyamalan, peddling an air fryer that's apparently really, really good for cooking chicken. Considering that so many of Shyamalan's cameos often have some sort of impact on the plot, usually in distracting ways, it was really fun to just see him playing such a gleefully dumb and unnecessary role for a change. According to the filmmaker himself, he almost didn't appear in the film at all. He said, Sometimes I'm not in the films because I just can't, it doesn't seem right. And this one I thought for sure I'm not going to be in. That's what I thought for sure. And then in pre-production, I was like, you know what? I have a funny idea. And then everybody enjoyed the concept so much, I was like, all right, let's go shoot. It was the first thing we shot, this thing that's in Knock at the Cabin. And I was like, this is never going to end up in the movie. And it did. And the editor was like, I love it, it's so funny. And I was like, you sure? Number 4. Keith dies at the end of the first act in Barbarian The pre-release buzz surrounding Zack Kreger's mesmerising horror debut Barbarian relentlessly implored audiences to know as little about it as possible going in because it massively subverted expectations. And even if you concluded from those hints that Bill Skarsgård's male lead Keith wasn't a total creeper, with malevolent designs on protagonist Tess, you probably still didn't see his abrupt, brutal demise coming. Keith and Tess end up sharing the Airbnb that they were double booked into, and after Tess discovers a hidden corridor in the house's basement, Keith goes down to investigate. He doesn't return, and so Tess follows him downstairs, where she discovers a secret underground tunnel and eventually stumbles across a deeply alarmed Keith. A confused Keith tries to get Tess to follow him out of the tunnel in the wrong direction, but amid their scuffle, Keith is suddenly attacked by the gigantic mutated woman living down there, who smashes his head to a bloody pulp by slamming it against the tunnel's wall. Again, even if you predicted that Keith was just a nice, slightly awkward guy, the jolting quality of his death is something nobody saw coming. Number 3. David Lynch cameos as John Ford in The Fablemans Steven Spielberg's new movie, The Fablemans, doesn't really offer up much in terms of surprises, and that's absolutely fine. 
It's a well-made quasi-dramatization of Spielberg's own life, and it doesn't really need to shock the audience. But the legendary filmmaker did nevertheless serve up one jaw-dropper of a cameo in the film's final moments, when young filmmaker Sammy does some work on the sitcom Hogan's Heroes and is by chance introduced to director John Ford, who happens to be working in a nearby office. The kicker? Ford is played by none other than David Lynch, who sports an eye patch and makes a meal of lighting a cigar before dispensing some wise filmmaking advice to Sammy. Given the larger-than-life quality of Ford himself, it was a fitting yet wildly shocking choice to have him played by such an eccentric and unique director. Number 2. The Mona Lisa Gets Destroyed in Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery Glass Onion is a tremendous murder mystery, where the true ruin of the movie's villain isn't their death or incarceration, but the total destruction of their reputation. Tech bro hyper douche Miles Bronn is ultimately foiled at film's end when Helen Brand uses Bronn's alternate fuel clear against him. Helen uses the unstable fuel to spark an explosion in Bronn's home before unlocking the protective casing keeping the Mona Lisa, which Bronn had on loan from the Louvre, safe. As such, the Mona Lisa is shockingly burned to a crisp along with Bronn's house, ensuring that just as he wished, his name would be forever mentioned in the same sentence as the Mona Lisa, given that he will be credited with the $870 million painting's destruction. Even though Ryan Johnson's film plays a bit of a Chekhov's painting with the Mona Lisa by introducing it and its protective casing early on, Johnson also does a great job shifting the audience's focus away from it, enough that when Helen finally dies for the control switch, it's a genuine an oh no moment. Though we don't get to see the public reaction to the Mona Lisa's destruction, it's safe to assume that Bronn will be a laughing stock for the rest of his life, regardless as to whether any criminal charges actually stuck or not. Number 1. Colin Firth's Pathetic Handjob in Empire of Light Empire of Light may have scored mixed reviews from critics and failed to make much of a dent with Oscar voters, but this otherwise modest, sedate drama does feature one unforgettably toe-curling scene. At the start of the movie, we're quickly introduced to protagonist Hilary Small and her humdrum life working as the duty manager at Margate's Empire Cinema. Shortly after arriving at work, she's called into the office of her boss Donald Ellis, at which point Sam Mendes cuts to Hilary administering the world's most depressing hand job to Donald. Even ignoring the massive impropriety of the power dynamics at play, the seedy low lighting combined with Donald's desperate attempts to convince Hillary to give him oral sex instead make it an excruciating scene to sit through. Thankfully, Mendes doesn't force it upon us for too long, but as part of a card-carrying Oscar bait movie that marketed itself as a classy drama about the power of cinema, this was the last thing anybody expected to see. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.